Hello everyone, HDA here. Um, I just thought today I would uh, do a little kit review. I just recently got in the Klingon Battle Cruiser um, from uh, Round 2 AMT. This is the uh, 1650 scale, I believe, um, redo of the classic TV kit. Um, and it says right on the right on the box Klingon battle cruiser featuring newly accurized parts so we'll take a look at that and see and uh, retro deluxe edition I think that's because it comes in um, chrome parts on the kit um, but we'll take a look at that it's 1650 scale and um, they're pointing out on the box uh, the detail on the on the engine themselves it looks like with chrome parts and they say revised details match the filming model used in the classic TV show. So, let's see, Klingon markings uh, and new window decals. And it comes with the uh, regular ball jointed uh, dome base from round two. So let's um, take a look at it. Let me open it right up here and we'll see what we got. Uh, we've got the, the base. Um, Unfortunately, it comes with a solid rod. Uh, I wish um, round two would start shipping these bases with a hollow rod for lighting purposes. Uh, that's there. Uh, here's the main hull, engineering hull of the, of the vessel, and two halves. And um, then we have one bag of screws for all the other kit parts. Um, and we have chrome parts. I guess that's why this is a deluxe kit, which appears to be details for the engine manifolds, uh, the torpedo tube at the front, and a few other parts. So we'll take a look at those in a minute. And um, let's see here. Oh, we have a retro looking construction sheet with uh, some really old typeface and um, the classic AMT logos on there direct instructions on how to put it together and on um, the back we have the instructions for the rest of the kit plus the decals and talking about an alternate display method for hanging it well oh, that's kind of cool so let me open up the, um, the bags and we'll take a quick look at all the sprues well, I did forget to mention um, the kit does come with the normal items that round two packages um, in every box. Their little um, sign up and be heard card for their free uh, newsletter. That's in every box along with a little brochure of other products that's uh, currently available. At least when the kit was manufactured. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the decals for this kit. Uh, let's take a look at those. Uh, definitely what's new, obviously, is all the window decals, uh, which previously didn't come with the kit um, in its original incarnation. Uh, these are very crisp, very clean looking. I uh, don't see any uh, any errors on those. Uh, when I build this kit, I don't know if I'm going to use the window decals or if I'm going to... Well, no. I probably am going to put lights in it, so I'm probably going to use these just for placement on the model to uh, determine where to bore out the drill out the, the ports for the windows but those are quite nice um, let's go ahead and move on to the parts of the kit the um, as I said it does come with the normal base and for those who have not maybe seen it before the ball joint base um, from round two it sits on a solid rod with the two little pieces of plastic one with a ball on it and the solid mount uh, so that you can put your model on and pose it with limited adjustment, not a lot, but some. And that's where the, uh, the model will plug into. And let's take a look at the, these parts and on the main hull. And right there is where that joint will go in place. So we'll pop it down on there and it will sit on the base just like so. Uh, and you'll be able to adjust it and pose it some. That's nice. Uh, these stands are very nice. A lot of model companies don't don't uh, package their kits with stands. 
and this is a very nice feature. Uh, it just would be nice if round two would use a hollow tube instead of these solid tubes. So if modelers want to light these, it makes it a little easier. You don't have to replace that. Otherwise, you can replace that with a, a diameter, same diameter um, aluminum or brass rod for that. Uh, obviously, the kit has the standard round two on the kit. Uh, silk screen I guess printed um, copyright notification information on there um, and this is the top hull piece uh, so it'll fit on just like that um, this is very clean there's very little flash on the model kit on the pieces uh, these tabs to remove uh, from the sprue that it was on everything else is very clean and very neat for that um, these are the chrome parts well, they're interesting, to say the least. Um, don't know if I like that. I don't know if you can paint over this foil chrome or not. Um, and I don't know if you can remove it. I imagine you probably can with some type of chemical solution. You might be able to remove this off, the, off these parts. Um, they are kind of nice, but... Uh, for my personal taste, I would prefer these to have just been regular styrene so I could have printed printed them up the way I would like to, I am painted them up the way I would have liked to uh, for the model kit. Well, let's set those aside. Those are all very clean. Now let's get into the main screws on this kit. And there are one, two, and I think, yep, three, four, five sprues. Some of them obviously are loose. Uh, these are the manifolds where those chrome parts, I think, go on. Uh, this one is. Um, and you have this piece, uh, which on the Katinga is lit. I'm not for sure. Uh, in the high-definition CGI version of Star Trek, the original series, if this was lit on the CGI model, obviously there was no lights at all on the studio model, um, the original studio model. And let's take a look at these parts here on the bridge module. Um, very nice. I can tell that the um, from looking at photos of the CGI model for HD the original series that this detail was a little bit different on there these are all really clean no flash on there and here is the neck piece uh, with the molded onion bulb front on the Katinga from Star Trek the motion picture on that AMT kit the bulb is a separate piece it's not molded as one um, this is hollowed out so that you can uh, run wiring into that for lighting, so that's really good. And it's very clean. It's, in fact, it's extremely clean of all flash. Um, and then these are the warp nacelles. And they too are very clean. There's a little flash on the sprue, but not on the, not on the parts themselves. And there just may be enough room and thickness on that for for some creative lighting if one wants to um, and this is the other side very clean very neat I'm happy with that and then these are the last fiddly parts that we have um, this is obviously the um, hangar bay section and these section these parts right here go on the back of the warp nacelles this is part of the bridge dome, or at least that dome section on the front of the on top of the onion section, and the rest of the parts. And they are all really clean. There's hardly any parts to this kit. It's um, very straightforward, and like the original studio model, it's uh, everything's rounded over. Um, there were no real sharp edges on the studio model, and the same thing here on the kit. So it should uh, be a good reproduction of it looks really nice and should be fairly quick to put together so I just wanted to show this this I don't know exactly when I'm going to get to this kit I've decided that you know I'm building the Katinga right now which is one of my favorite Star Trek models of all time and um, I wanted to go ahead and do the uh, series version in 1 650 scale 
and um, I know that Sci-Fi Model Action members for the month of January um, will be doing the um, D, the, uh, the D7, the same as this, but I think it's in the 1,000 one scale for that particular model. Um, which I will be getting, hopefully, and participating in as well. Um, this is a, a really straightforward kit. I don't know if I'm going to do this as a non-lighted kit in relation to doing it like the original studio model. Um, or if I'm going to go ahead and and do the high definition version, CGI version of this model and do all the lighting. I really like to do lighting so I probably will go down that path and I may customize it a little bit to to be my own instead of uh, one or the other. Maybe uh, do a little hybrid between the two of them. Um, obviously on the studio model there were not, no engine ports or anything and there's none molded on the back of this kit and those are do show up on the um, on the high definition CGI version of the show so I'll have to take a look at that and see but I want to do the Katinga, I want to do the from the Star Trek the motion picture, I want to do the redo version of that uh, from Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country Kona Swan, I want the, uh, the D7 um, AMT kit, I'd also like to do the uh, D7 uh, from uh, Revell of Germany which I think would be a really good kit as well as, well as the original series uh, Enterprise um, from uh, Revell of Germany as well besides the 1350 uh, version from round two. Just as a quick comparison uh, with the D7 kit um, this 1650 scale in relation to the Katinga in terms of model details and everything I thought I would hold up one of the nacelles um, from the D7 to do the Katinga at the top to uh, give you an idea about the size differences there are between the two models. Obviously the uh, Katinga has a lot more detail on it. But it's interesting to see that, you know, in reality when they went ahead and decided uh, to do uh, Star Trek Phase 2 and then upgrade the Katinga model to, um, to um, the motion picture version, uh, they really didn't stray far. Um, from the original Klingon design that Matt Jeffries had done for the original series. Uh, the Katinga really is a faithful representation and an advancement um, for the studio model. So that's kind of cool. Um, let me um, show one other comparison real quick. This is the top hull for the Katinga model. And this is the D7. Uh, in comparison, so I'll set that right on top of that so you can see the differences in size it's not much different um, it's pretty it's pretty close so anyway this is the D7 kit from AMT round 2 as it's released now with the deluxe chrome parts if anyone's interested and just wanted to see what came in the kit there it is, it's very straightforward nice little decal set very straightforward instructions um, on the kit. I think this um, I think this kit is available in the standard box version as well as the collector's tin right now from round two. So there you go. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, happy modeling.